If you want the Las Vegas Raiders to go out and sign cornerback Marcus Peters, you see what he's doing right here? I want you to do the exact same thing. Hit the like button down below right now because there's a chance Peters might check out this video. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by Manscaped. It is smooth sack summer here at Chat Sports, and if you're looking down and you can't quite see your Ken Stabler because your George W is a little bit too out of hand, go to manscaped.com, use promo code Raiders for 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. So coming up here on today's show, we're going to be looking at free agent cornerback Marcus Peters, because there was a news update from NFL Insider that covers the Baltimore Ravens. And the reason why that that's intriguing is because for some of y'all who have watched the show for a long time, you'll know that I have said, per source, the top two teams for him were the team that he played on the last few years, the Baltimore Ravens and the Las Vegas Raiders. So this news update, this news dump that we are getting, I don't know about you, I'm glad you can't see underneath the table because I am rock hard right now. So if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, turn on those notifications because anytime there's news, rumors, anything around the silver and black, the NFL, I got you covered here. And if Marcus Peters does sign, oh, you better believe it. We're going live. So for those that do not know, for those that are watching us live right now, we are going to be doing a Madden simulation on today's live show. And if you want to tune into the rest of our live Madden simulations, here is our schedule. We're going to be going live every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday in the month of July. And then once you get closer to the month of August, the closer we get to the actual preseason schedule, well, I don't know if the Raiders are going to make the playoffs yet, so I'm hoping that they can make it. But at the end of the day, we'll have to see how Jimmy G, how Josh McDaniels end up working out in year one. And as we know, whatever happens on Madden, obviously, is what's going to happen in real life. Now, let's actually talk about some real life stuff here. In terms of Marcus Peters potentially going to the Las Vegas Raiders, there is a report out right now from the top beat reporter amongst Baltimore that says that the Ravens are not likely to pursue Peters. And Peters has played with the Ravens since 2019, so there's obviously some chemistry. There's obviously some players there. But if you remember, the Ravens, they signed Rocky Sin to a one-year, $6 million deal. That potentially means that, yeah, they might not try to bring in Peters. But if the Ravens are not likely to pursue, I'm telling you all right now, that means that the Raiders are the front runners. And this list that you're about to see, because... Anytime we talk about an NFL free agent, my job here at Chat Sports is to look at it from an NFL side, look at it from a Raiders standpoint. If I was a betting man, which I am, here are the top four teams that I would say Peters is the most likely to join. Number one, the Silver and Black. Number two, I'm still going to say it's the Baltimore Ravens. Number three, I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings. And then at number four, it's going to be the Detroit Lions. Now, according to this Ravens insider, you could try to pronounce his last name. I'm just going to call him Jeff and him on them signing Marcus Peters. My colleague Vic Tafer reported that he expects the Raiders to sign Peters. If you're Peters, you might as well wait to see if a better offer opportunities materialize. It's not like he's missing out on anything by not signing in early July. While I'm still not ready to completely roll out the Ravens, they haven't acted this offseason like a team that prioritized bringing Peters back. So as soon as I read that, I'm like, all right, I can wrap my mind around him leaning with his buddy Vic Tafer because Tafer has said that the Raiders seem likely to sign Peters before training camp. That was a report from the Athletics Tafer, I'm going to say about two, three weeks ago at this point. But if you remember, okay, Peters visited the Raiders all the way back on May 15th. And for the Raiders, their training camp, vets report July 25th, rookies report the 20th. So if you're Peters and you're his camp and you want to be there by the start of training camp, essentially, you just have to be there by July 25th. So you got Peters and the Raiders. They have remained in contact. That is something that we have discussed multiple, multiple times, not only on this show, but you can find it just about anywhere on YouTube. And as it stands right now, there is a deal on the table. It is a deal that Peters, I would say, is okay with, and he's not super eager to sign or else... He would have already signed. It's a wait-and-see game for Peters and 
for the Raiders. If this is the first time you've joined the Raiders Report, we are an interactive YouTube channel. I don't know about you, but if I see somebody at the bar sitting by themselves talking to them, or if I see some dude walking down the street talking to himself, I kind of look at him a little weird. I don't want you guys to do that to me. So type that Y for yes. Give me an N for no. Will the Raiders sign Marcus Peters? And I'm going to give you my answer. But first, I got to show some love to Manscaped. Not only are they making my balls look great, they can also help you guys out as well. They are dominating the game from the belly button down. But guess what? They can also make the upstairs look great as well. 20% off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there. Huge shout out to Manscaped. And I hope you guys can remember code Raiders at manscaped.com. Luckily for you, while Jeremy, I mean, Manscaped products are so easy to use, Jeremy can actually put the link down in the comments and in the description and shave his balls at the exact same time. Dude is super talented. And with our awesome promo code, you can actually get your hands on it for $87.99. Mm, that's very true. Jeremy is spotless. He has already taken advantage of Smooth Sack Summer. And I tell people all the time, if you sweat underneath your arms, why? It's probably because you don't use deodorant. Guess what? If your armpits smell, I don't even want to know what your balls smell like. So get your hands on some ball deodorant, some ball toner from Manscaped. It is literally hot as balls down here in Texas. And I can already tell you, if you got some Fumunda cheese down there, I guarantee you I'm going to be able to smell it. And studies show that women care more about the way that you smell. It's hard enough to get them to go down there. I don't want them, once they get down there, be like, no. Nah, I'm good. Hard pass. Remember, it's promo code Raiders at manscaped.com. So, again, we're talking about Marcus Peters potentially joining the Raiders. And my question was, why for yes and for no, will the Raiders go out and sign Peters? I feel weird talking that much about balls. And now I'm going to transition into some just win babies because, well, that's what we do here on the Raiders Report. But in terms of Peters joining the silver and black, I, I got to give this one three just win babies. And I am going to say that it is pretty likely that the Raiders signed the veteran corner. And it's because both sides want to get a deal done. My guy, Graphic Raider, which is funny, uh, he was in the live show chat saying he believes that it's going to be done in three to four weeks. The notes on my screen, the last time I talked to him, he told me that it's going to be sometime in August. And you got Tafer who's reporting it's going to be before training camp. I personally will side with Graph over Tafer for the simple sake of, unfortunately, the Raiders don't have any good beat reporters, and I'm going to trust the guys on YouTube and my friends who I know are a lot more connected to the situation. But if you see three just win babies, that means it's a 75% chance that the Raiders end up bringing him in. I'm not going to give it four because there's always a chance something crazy happens. If you think that crazy shit doesn't happen in the NFL, then you must be new to watching in the NFL. The only way that Peters doesn't sign with the Raiders, two scenarios. If another team drastically overpays him, does he want to be a Raider? Yes, he does. But he's also 30 years old. He is also nearing the end of his NFL career. And if a team's going to pay you more money, I don't necessarily blame him. The second would be that he retires. He realizes, ah, I can't quite play like I want to be able to play. Had that ACL injury back in 2021, and it's time for me to hang him up. Now, I will admit, I do not want the Raiders to offer him anything over $4 million. As I stated earlier in the show, if you're going to get Marcus Peters $6 million, I, I, I can't. I can't sit up here and say to Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler, how can you let Rockyson go for six million and then you're going to give Peters five, six million? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You should have just brought back Rockyson. So, right now, as it stands, Las Vegas has 2.7 million in salary cap space as I am making this video on July 6th. So, some things can change here and there. The Raiders can move on from a few players. You might be able to cut a guy, trade a guy, free up some cap space. But the NFL has also proven me this. Salary cap is made up. If they want Peters, they can make it happen. So be honest with me. I already just said that I believe that it ends up happening. The next area of that question is, should it happen? Should the Raiders sign Peters? And if you think that they should, I want you to type B for believe it, baby. If you're like, dude, makes no sense. Guy's old. I see David Zahn in the chat saying, no, he's old. I want you to type T for tuck rule, tuck that. I will continue to say this. Before the NFL draft happened, I said, no, 
Doesn't make sense to go out and get Peters, the very talented class of cornerbacks entering the 2023 NFL Draft. The Raiders neglected round one. They neglected round two. They neglected round three. I do like Ja'Cory and Bennett, but he is a day three corner, and he's still got some tools to learn, and I do think that he's going to be a better fit in Patrick Graham's system in the slot. So, yes, I want the Raiders to go out and sign Peters now because you're still sitting at this point of the offseason, and Nate Hobbs is a hell of a player. Duke Shelley's got some upside. David Long Jr. is a question mark. Brandon Faison, question mark. There's just too many question marks on this Raiders defense, and I say that, and I'm also going to say that Marcus Peters is a question mark. But I am big on fit, and I'm big on, big on change. And if you're the Raiders and you just continue to do the same thing over and over and over again, that is the definition of insanity. If there is one thing that I will bet on when it comes to Peters is he's going to be able to force turnovers. And Las Vegas last season, dead last in turnovers, whether you look at forced fumbles, whether you look at interceptions. Is Peters the all-pro corner that he once was? No. And that's just the way that it is. But you know what also Peters is going to bring? Swagger. And that Raiders defense, man, they need about as much swagger as you can get because they've been the laughing stock on defense for a very, very long time. On top of that, when you have such a young team, you need to be able to go out and find some veterans that fit your system. And one of the stats that I love when you look at Peters is his man coverage numbers from last season. Because Patrick Graham is going to run press man. Marcus Peters is going to get in your face. He's going to get dirty with you. And he's going to make sure that you know that you went up against him that day. Targeting last season, 28 times. Gave up 12 catches, 183 yards, 3 PBUs, and a quarterback rating of 81.2 against him. That's still being able to play at a high level. When he played in zone last season, he really struggled. That was Baltimore not using him in the right way for the Raiders. They are going to run man, and that's what helps out Marcus on the outside. So as it stands right now, this is what the Raiders' cornerback depth chart looks like. And the best part about this Raiders' defense is they do have a lot of versatility. They do have a lot of depth, and they're going to be able to move some players around. But... I like me some Tyler Hall. He is a underrated player, and whether it's Hall, whether it's Ja'Cory and Bennett, I like this a lot more, though. I like Peters on the outside. I like Nate Hobbs being there in the slot, Duke Shelley on the other side, and then you have more depth with Brandon Faison, Ja'Cory and Bennett, Hall. Over the final eight games of last season, the Raiders' defense actually played pretty damn well. From weeks 11 to week 16, the Raiders were only behind the San Francisco 49ers in points allowed at 18.3 points per game. They got roasted their final two games of the season because they had no depth whatsoever. I'm just saying, this team has a decent amount of depth. Hopefully the front can get after some quarterbacks because that's going to help out these guys on the back end. So my overall take here on Peters is, yes, I want them to bring him in. I want them to bring in a veteran. I was very confident when the Raiders signed Casey Hayward. Why? Because he was a good veteran and he knew the Gus Bradley system. Why did I like Deron Harmon? Because he knows how Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler work, and he was a good veteran. I believe Marcus Peters on this Raiders defense might not be to the caliber of a Casey Hayward, may not be to the caliber of a Deron Harmon, but if we're going to sit up here and we're going to preach bringing in young players, sometimes coaches can't have the same language or they can't relay certain messages to some of these younger players where that's where a guy like Marcus Peters can step up and help you be a player coach like Casey Hayward, like Deron Harmon. So my four final reasons here are why I want the Raiders to sign him. You need to force more turnovers. He's going to help you do that. He's not going to cost a lot of money. At this point in the offseason, if a dude's asking for a lot, he's probably not going to play. He's a good fit in the Patrick Graham system. And this is always a reason that I will throw out there. He wants to be a Raider. It's hard to find players right now that want to be Raiders. And when you grow up a Raider fan, you wear the jersey in a certain type of way. I want players, when they put on the pads, when they put on that helmet, to wear it with pride. Because all NFL players are very lucky to do what they do and to make millions of dollars. And I think Marcus is going to do that, and he's going to bring his effort every single game.